people. Yes. 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 And it's yes. great to be. I, I, I could imagine the book of Acts. Yes. You know, when they came around and house to house, and, and it's amazing. I love doing house ministry and preaching. Whoever God gives me an opportunity, I'll preach to one person if I have to. Amen. But it's just an amazing. Is anybody yet tonight that has been to this house the very first time? Anybody? One, two, three. Welcome. Praise the Lord. It won't be your last time. Amen. 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 You say last, we say last. <laughs> Amen. You say half and half, we say half and half. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So uh, my wife and I, we, uh, we are originally from South Africa. Uh, we live in London now. We've been living there for the last 15, 16 years in London, uh, the UK. And um, uh, we have an amazing time there. And we come in uh, a preacher quite often. Um, and uh, we're just going to have an, an awesome time uh, next week, Tuesday. Tell somebody next week, Tuesday. Next week, Tuesday. We're going to have a meeting here again. My wife is preaching tonight. She's an amazing teacher, preacher, prophet of God. And she's written a book, but she's going to announce this book uh, that you can uh, do. She's going to prophesy over you. She's going to tell you uh, things that you uh, that before you were born, and even when you were born, and how many days you will come on somebody. Yeah. The prophetic mantle is going to fall in this house tonight. Yeah. And I'm putting a great expectation on my pressure on my wife. Amen. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33, 3, it says, Call to me and I will tell you things you do not know. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. God wants you to know something that you do not know. Come on, somebody. Amen. God has the answers. Uh, you say answers, I say answers. God has the answers for your problem. Come on, somebody. Amen. God has to give you the answer to, uh, to bring a, a, a solution to your problem. So get ready for what the Lord has. In James 5 16, it says, The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I oh, do you believe? Yeah. We are yeah. righteous in Christ, not because of our own doing. Come on, somebody. Yeah. God, is, God is saying, Because of me, your prayers are going to be answered. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So I just want to hand over to my beautiful, wonderful, awesome Miss Wife. I thank God for her. And I thank God for what she uh, she is for me, and she's uh, my 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 uh, partner for life. Amen. 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 I met her. I don't know if you know the testimony. I met her one day. And I said to the Lord, Lord, when I meet my wife, I will know it's my wife, and I will marry her immediately. I met my wife, and one month later we got married. This year will be 28 yeah, years Ooh, that she's lady, married to this sexy guy. <laughs> <laughs> So it, is a, so it is a really good, <laughs> so I'm going to hand over to my wife and, and then we're just going to flow and we're just going to get going with what the Lord, amen, bless you, come my darling, my sweetheart, my honey bunch. Thank you, my baby. Okay, praise the Lord. I just have to mention my book. I just want to mention it as well. Um, if you haven't read it, please read it. I haven't brought copies with me, but it's called Fragrance of a Crushed Flower. You can order it on Amazon um, and from other bookstores and so on. But um, through Amazon, you can also download it through the uh, Kindle version and you can read it that way. It's cheaper. and um, But I want to encourage you to get it. It will inspire your faith. And you know, before I met the sexy hunk over here, Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, my life didn't start off so well. I'm not preaching my testimony today, but I want to tell you something. I can, from as young as I can remember, I was molested by a family member. Okay. And that took my life in a completely wrong direction as in, in my youth, very young youth, early youth, I ended up in the arms of a street gang leader on the streets of South Africa. Wow. And he was a professional boxer and he was the leader of a street gang. 
and I literally was abused physically like I cannot tell you the fact that I'm standing here today is only the, bra the grace of God and this book is a testimony of how God you know took me out of I had to escape that man okay but it only actually happened I tried everything on my own strength but it only actually happened when I met someone stronger. Amen. 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 Jesus. And his Jesus. name is Jesus. Amen. 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 And he helped me out Hallelujah. of that situation. And I literally had to trust him daily yes. for my survival. And that's how I got to know my Savior in a deep and intimate way. And so this book is, you know, it, it, it might just stir you. Because even though I got saved, I was still in that situation. In the physical and I had to get out of that situation and let me tell you something one day I was lying on the floor and I cried out to God and I said how can you let him beat me like this I was really that day I thought I was that was it I thought I was gonna be dead that day okay I was lying I was skin and bone I was lying on the floor like a pile of bones on the floor and I cried out to God and I said Lord how can you let him do this to me I'm your child and he said to me, because you're not trusting me with your life. Because right. I was trusting him that God will just take this guy out of my life. He'll find someone else. He'll leave me. And what? <laughs> <laughs> but God was expecting more of me. Mm -hmm. He wanted me to trust him with my life. That I would leave this guy and trust God that he would protect me. And I literally had to trust him with my life. Okay? Yeah, but only when I did that... That everything's turned around in my life. Okay? And so God is challenging us to trust Him with our whole life. In some way, He's going to challenge you because He wants all of you, not just some of you. Okay? He wants all of your heart and He wants you to trust Him with all of your life. At the back of my book, uh, because this is a story book, but it's the true story, <laughs> it's not a made up story, it's my life story but it will keep you biting your nails <laughs> but at the end in the uh, second half of the book second portion of the book there's a lot of prayers to help you to do self-deliverance um you know it's wonderful you can go to pastors but it's wonderful too if you can just deliver yourself from any kind of things that you've been through in life you know and so of course I went through such abuse and I had a lot of things I had to work through and so there's a lot of prayers in the back of this book to help you to pray through um, specific issues in your life and take you through some self-deliverance so I just want to leave that with you yeah, today wants to purchase one they can and you Amazon no I'm not going to mail it from England okay. right over here in this country you can get it off Amazon okay. much cheaper you can just download it off the internet either electronically or you can get the hard copy okay. I mean paperback um, through Amazon Okay, Kindle, so Amazon, yeah. yes, if, if you battle to get it, you can get it through uh, these other bookstores, just order it through them as well, okay? Because um, I know it's available on Amazon, but um, if they run out of stock or something, you can just order it through another, another bookstore. Okay, right, so getting on to my message today, hallelujah! God is alive! Amen! Amen. Yes, he is. Sorry, I need to give her some information. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so I need to know that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Got my little tiny iPad. I'm going to try and preach out of my little iPad. Um, easier to travel with. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Father. We just want to give you praise tonight, Lord. We want to thank you that you are alive and well today. You're not a story made up from someone smoking pot, but Father, you are alive. Hallelujah. You're alive. Hallelujah. You're real, Lord. You want to touch us. You want to change us. You are hope to the hopeless, Lord. And you are the answer. You are the answer of the world. And, and Lord, give us more faith tonight, I ask in Jesus' name. Lord, as I minister, just tie my tongue to your will, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So the message tonight is called, What Garments Are You Wearing? Just think about that for a moment. 
you might be thinking, oh, sure, but I knew I shouldn't have worn this today. I should have worn something else. <laughs> Don't look around at what anyone else is wearing because religion does that. No, it's not about your physical garments. We're talking about your spiritual garments tonight. Amen. Okay, I want to just read, if you have your Bibles, you may read it, uh, this book of Jude, 1 verse 20. It says, but you, beloved, speaking about us, the beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Did you catch that? Build yourself up. It's not anybody else's responsibility right. to build you up. It's not your pastor's responsibility. It's not my responsibility to build you up. Although I'm here tonight and I'm going to build you up in the faith in Jesus' name. But it's each one of our own responsibilities. We will stand before God one day for He's given us His word. And we need to build ourselves up in our most holy faith. And it tells us the key to pray in the Holy Ghost. That's right. Pray as much as you can in the Holy Ghost and you're going to be built up. Amen? That's yeah, right. that's true. God will give you the answers. He'll speak to you and He'll tell you everything you need to know, the deep secrets of God. Keep yourself in the love of God. That's the second key. Okay? I want to tell you something. You can have the best gifts, the most powerful gifts. And they will not operate like they should. And so you get yourself in the love of God. Amen. The love of God is the key. Yes. Okay? It's more deeper than you can ever imagine. You know, we've been told about the love of God since we're little. Since we're little, you probably heard about the love of God. And for some people, it's like, oh, that's old news. I heard that so long ago, you know? No. This is reality. This is Jesus' love. Amen. Okay? And we need to be living in Jesus. Living in Christ. And putting on Jesus on our daily life. This is not my message. Sorry, I just need to get there quickly. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. So we're moving on to it. It says, um, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction. It actually tells us to make a distinction. Some people must have a lot of compassion with. Don't put everybody in the same box. That's right. Don't judge people, okay? That's right. Have more compassion. Some people need more compassion. You know, some people have been to a heck of a lot more than other people have. Amen. Okay? All right? It says, make that distinction. Then it says, verse 23, but others save with fear. So not the fear is from the devil. There's the fear of God. And we need to sometimes preach hell and brimstone to some people and get them saved through fear. All right. Hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. So we're going to talk about this tonight. Let's look at that word fire. You know in the Bible there's a lot of metaphors. Do you know that? There's lots of metaphors. But this word fire is not a metaphor. There's a real fire. And I'm not here tonight to preach about hell. But I just want to throw that in there. There's a real fire. It's not a metaphor. It's in the realm of the spirit. And it's the fires of hell. And it's warning people here about the fires of hell. Okay? Not a metaphor. And it goes on in that same verse. It says, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Okay? That word garment is not a metaphor. It's also in the spirit. We are wearing, just like in the physical, we wear clothing. In the spiritual, we wear clothing. We have a garment. Okay? Right. Not one garment, many different garments. Okay? Depending. Depending. But there's different garments. And it tells us that this garment in the spirit, our spiritual clothing, it says is defiled by the flesh. We know what the flesh, it speaks about the flesh, it's the sins of the flesh. We read about that in Galatians chapter 5. It talks about the, the you know, just go and read it, Galatians chapter 5. It talks about uh, the, the sins of the flesh and, you know, it talks about all of that. So you can go and read that. We're not going to preach on, on that tonight. But sin defiles our spiritual garment. Okay. And this garment I want to talk about tonight. Okay. Um, Isaiah 64. 
Verse 6 says, For we have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteousness is like a polluted garment. There's that word garment again. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities take, uh, like the wind, take us away. So just think of a leaf and how it fades, okay? And this context is talking about that. That's what our spiritual garment becomes like, like a, a, a leaf that's fading and withering. <laughs> what is he? <laughs> okay. What's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so, so so my point is, okay, this garment that we're wearing, it gets stained, it gets faded, right. okay, by sin. Sin stains our spiritual garments, and it fades it, okay, <clears throat> fades it like a leaf. And and the more that we do, delve into sin, eventually it, t it takes us away like the wind. Just blows us away, like a leaf in the wind. Okay? It blows us away from God. Okay? And now walk with God. Get caught up with all kinds of things. Uh, Psalms 73 verse 6 says, Therefore pride is their necklace, and violence covers them like a garment. Malachi 2.16 I don't know whether I should quote this or not. Please don't get offended. It is the word of God. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Lord God of Israel says that he hates divorce and covers one's garment with violence. It is the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. To your spirit. Take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously. Sin affects our garment, our spiritual garment. Now I know there's been this era, this period of time where the church has been attacked terribly mm -hmm. because of false teachings concerning sin. You know, it's okay, you can sin, you know, it doesn't, you know, uh, there's so many different teachings, I'm not going into that tonight. The issue is, yes, if you sin, if you sin, we have a saviour. And He forgives sin Amen. when we ask Him. Amen. He forgives us our sin. Amen. Okay? Amen. And He washes our garments as white as snow. Okay? Yes, Lord. We should, but we need to keep this in our minds. That when we sin, it does affect us. It affects our garments. Okay? And what happens is the enemy, we know there's an enemy. The Bible says He prowls a lie around like a roaring lion. Lion seeking whom he may devour. How do you think he does that? He sees our spiritual garment. He sees it getting stained and faded. He says he's the weak one. Can do you know how lions operate? Okay, they go for the weakling. Yes. Okay, that's how um, that's how predators operate. They go for the weakling, and that's the devil sees our weakness by our garments becoming faded and withered, okay? And that's the one he targets. And then before long, and the devil moves, the devil's <coughs> aim, um, um, uh, demonic um, spirits, they operate in, in groups like hyenas, <laughs> okay? Mm. They go around that individual and start bombarding that person's mind with all kinds of thoughts, and that person thinks it's their own thoughts, okay? In the realm of the spirit, thoughts of, uh, you know, that's how the devil operates. He plants thoughts in a person's mind, mm -hmm. okay? And that per he's so deceptive, he'll, he'll use the word I. I'm craving for a cigarette. Mm -hmm. It's not even you. You're not even craving a cigarette. But I'm just using that as an example, okay? So easy example to use, okay? And... But he plants the suggestion in the mind of the person, and suddenly the person says, Hmm, ah, uh, ah, uh, and he's agreeing with the devil now. Yeah, yeah, I'm here, I need, I need a cigarette. And we find my cigarette. You know? All right, and so that's how the devil operates, and he leads us like a puppet on a string through our thoughts. Okay? All right? But he preys on the, on, the, on the weaklings. Now, I don't care if you're a prophet or an apostle or a pastor. The devil don't care. Amen. Okay? Mm -hmm. He doesn't care. 
right. your garment gets defiled and he sees exactly who you are. All those sins in the closet that nobody else sees, he knows about it. There's no, no secrets in the realm of the Spirit. Amen. There's no secrets in the realm of the Spirit. Okay? And so I'm trying to help you today. Amen. I'm trying to give you keys today. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to awaken your understanding to how the devil operates and also how God operates. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to go on a little bit more. Okay? And I'll just mention this one scripture because it's relevant. It's in the New Testament. Okay? <laughs> it says, in Revelation 3, 17, it says, You say, I am rich. I have become wealthy. I don't need anything. Yet you don't realize that you are miserable, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Hmm. Speaking to the people of God. The scriptures to the people of God. Okay. <laughs> so just because we may be wealthy own a lot of land, a lot of businesses, maybe you're the most wealthiest person on earth, I don't know. You might be sitting here with us tonight. I don't know. In England, we have this epidemic where the people just don't think they need God because their money is their God. Okay, you know what the Bible says about that? Okay. It says, uh, you know, you can't serve both. Either God or mammon. God wants your heart. And it sees your heart by your money. Okay. Alright. But it says over here, miserable, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. It's speaking to the people of God, the believers, that scripture. So don't think because you're a Christian that it doesn't matter. It's okay, we've got the blood of Jesus, so we can do anything. We can't live like the devil. Okay? Alright, we can't live like the devil. We are Christians, we need to make a distinction. And it's not actually, the more you love Jesus, you just don't want that gunk in our lives, do we? True. We don't want sin in our lives. It should appall us. It should, we shouldn't want it anyway. Okay? All right. So I'm rude to this country. I was praying in the airplane, and I asked the Lord, what is he saying to his people? If you know, for this trip, I wanted to come with something from the Lord. And he says, he gave me this vision. I'm just going to share it with you because it's very brief. It's a very, very short vision, but with a big explanation. <laughs> okay. So, the vision was a man walking in a tunnel. And he was wearing only his underwear. <clears throat> and, he, and he looked back like that. So, that's all I saw. But, but God said to me, through the interpretation of that vision, that that man is the body of Christ. That man is the body of Christ. I'm bringing a message today in the season that we are living. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. it's, a it's, a, it's a seasonal message about what state the body of Christ is in at the moment. Now, you as an individual might not be like this, so don't get offended. Okay? But as a whole... Generally, this is a seasonal word for the body of Christ now, okay? So the body of Christ, this vision is about the body of Christ, the believers. And the tunnel speaks about the unseen realm. Because the tunnel is underground, it's unseen. It's talking about the unseen realm, okay? In the life of the believers, all right? Also, on the point of a tunnel, concerning tunnel, a tunnel... Have you ever heard of that saying um, where a person's got tunnel vision? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Tunnel vision is very limited vision. Okay. It's a very limited vision. And that's what happens when you're in that state that we're going to talk about tonight. Okay. As sin darkens one's understanding, um, it darkens one's spiritual sight, one's spiritual vision. And one's garments. Okay? So that's what sin does. Sin doesn't just do what I said where it stains the garments and that. It also um, limits the vision of the individual. Their spiritual understanding. Have you ever spoken to someone and said, I just can't understand why they don't get it. Yeah. Why can't they get it? Right. You know? And it's that. Sin blocks, it, 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 it hampers the person's revelation. 
of the Word of God. Okay? And understanding of the things of God. And for the unlock, vision itself. You know, the Bible says with that vision, my people perish. Amen. Am I right? Amen, yes. And so sometimes people just word. can't seem to have a vision for themselves, you know? So, but um, other than that, so the person, also they compromise a lot and, and from one compromise to another, you know, a sin, it starts off a little, little thing and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That's how sin operates, you know, because the, the conscience becomes seared in that area. Are you all understanding what I'm saying? Yes. 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 And you understand mm. my accent? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, the next thing, three. They were walking. That man was walking. And that, so that's telling me it's about the believer's daily walk with God. In the unseen realm. Um, he looked back. It's talking about... Come in. Welcome. Okay, so he looked back. So it's talking about... Um, he, he's seen things the way he always has. In his life, in the, from the past, you know. So, seeing things from a physical perspective and not a spiritual perspective. Okay? Alright. Um, the unseen realm in their own life. So, so, the body of Christ, you know, there's lots of different streams in the body of Christ. And lots of people have got to understand. You know, they, these devils and angels and all this kind of thing. They do believe these things exist. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a church because God is spirit. Am I right? Yes. Okay. But they just... And they even know that sin is bad for you and all these kind of things. But there seems to be just that they don't believe that it affects them. <laughs> okay? It doesn't affect them. Oh... Auntie, so-and-so, she's doing this and she shouldn't do that and, you know, all this kind of what other people are doing. But they themselves are gossiping or whatever, but they don't recognize their own sin in their own life. And it's like, and even if they do recognize it, it's like it's not a big deal, you know. They don't see their own spiritual life, their own, from a, from a spiritual perspective. Okay. I mean, there is a lot out there. Some people are really hungry, wanting to know what does heaven look like, what does demons look like, what does angels look like, you know, seeking God, what does He look like, and so on. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? If you want to see what God looks like or what angels look like, it's okay, ask God. He says, you, you can ask Him anything. There's nothing wrong with that. But we must be concerned about our own spiritual garments, how we look in the Spirit. Amen. That's very important. Okay? Amen. Okay. The only clothing this man in my vision was wearing was his underwear. So that tells me a lot. A lot. Okay? He didn't even have casual clothes on. He didn't even have casual clothes on. You are, and never mind getting dressed to go out, dressed to go to do something special. He was wearing his underwear. Okay, so what does the underwear mean? It's speaking about covering up his private life. You know, the body of Christ seems to be okay, but as long, you know, they'll do anything and whatever, but just they don't want you to know what's going on in their private life. Ooh. Their private life, you stay out of their private life, you know? So you know, the underwear is speaking about their private life and um, covering that up. Um, they, they only concern what others can see concerning their private life. And um, yeah, and, and also, underwear speaks about being unprepared. Yeah. You know, somebody comes to the door and you're wearing your underwear, you're unprepared to receive guests. Okay? Yeah. Right. All right. And if somebody walked in here wearing just their underwear, it would be quite shameful, wouldn't it? Yeah. Right? <laughs> So they're unprepared for anything, positive or negative. If a, a, on a positive perspective, God might want to use them to lay hands on the sick or whatever, but they're not dressed appropriately, spiritually. Okay? They're just not concerned about what they look like in the spirit and what they carry. You can be carrying some horrible stuff, you know? We don't want you to be carrying horrible stuff. 
You know, some of these devils, they jump from one shoulder to the other. And that's the reality. Okay? Very quickly. Very quickly. A person can turn, become homosexual, just like that. Do you know that? <laughs> People that grew up all their life not homosexual, suddenly they become homosexual. They marry, they got children, never been like that before, suddenly they become homosexual. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm saying to you, you've got to guard yourself. And it's very important. We got to, what are we wearing? What are we carrying? Okay? Because our love affects other people. Yes. Okay? Alright. You see, on the positive God job, I might, I might want to distribute you to lay hands on the sick. He might want you to pray for the sick. He might, might want you to uh, do a miracle or something. Or preach to somebody. Get somebody saved. But because you're not ready, you're unprepared. You know? You feel like, oh, I don't know what to say, you know? She feels cowardly, if I can use that expression. You know? Or fearful, you know? Fear, the devil uses fear, he throws fear at people. Sometimes people are carrying fear. And it's crippling them, like me. I was crippled by fear. Crippled by fear. I could not believe. I could not, in the natural, I could not believe that I could get her out of that situation. I was with that guy for six years, being beaten up to a pulp. And in my natural, I could not believe I could get out of this. This guy threatened, if you leave me, I'll kill you. And when I tried in the natural to, before I met Jesus, to escape him, when he found me, he increased the threats. He says, if you leave me again, I'll kill your family. Let me tell you something. Fear is real. And it cripples people's minds. I could not believe I could get out of it. Until Jesus touched my understanding. And he set me free of that spirit of fear. And even though I was set free of fear, I still felt the feelings of fear. Yes. I still had to face my Goliath. Uh -uh. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But God wants you to be ready. You see, what you wear in the physical realm, it's basically your jacket. You know a jacket? It says a lot. All right? So a person wearing a jacket, just by what kind of jacket they're wearing, you can tell what kind of authority that person has. What? Yes, sure. <laughs> okay. What's going on? That's my okay. Okay. Father, we take authority in the name of Jesus. Come and pray to get them. In the name of Jesus, we command the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, and we command the name of Jesus.
to God. They also determine your vulnerability to the devil. Okay? 
All right, hallelujah. We need garments of integrity, honesty, humility, garments of intercession. There's many, many different kinds of garments that we want and we need in our lives. Okay, I'm just quickly rushing ahead. Problem with this man is he didn't realize he was naked in this vision. Didn't realize he was naked. And we really need to ask God to reveal to us yes. what are our clothing? Mm-hmm. How, what condition is our clothing? What are we wearing? Okay? Mm-hmm. And we need to deal with it. If we have garments of sin as well, you know, we could also have garments of sin. Mm-hmm. We, we want to ask God to remove those garments. Yes. We, we want our garments to be shining and bright. Yes. Yes. Okay? Yes. We want garments of fire. Yes. Amen? Yes. We want the fire yes. of God. Yes. Amen? Yes. Oh, there's so many wonderful garments that we can have. The garments, and let me tell you something, the wardrobe that we can have is out of this world. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Isaiah 61 verse 10. It says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. And the bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and a bride adorns herself with jewels. You know, our garments are like jewels, they are so beautiful. Our spiritual garments are so beautiful. We can put on the armor of God. You know, some people look at the armor of God as, you know, they stand in the front of the mirror and they put their helmet on and they take out their sword. (laughs) But actually, this is putting on Jesus. Amen. Our armor of God is putting on Jesus. All the different elements of our garment is putting on Jesus. Putting on the buckle of truth. In other words, we're deciding every day to put on truth. Truth. We're going to walk in truth. We're not going to lie. We're going to walk in truth. And we're going to walk in the knowledge of God. How are you feeling? Brother? Hallelujah. You just sit there under the anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, The devil does not want you to be here tonight. (laughs) Okay, so, so, what does it say? So the honor of God, so we choose to walk in truth. The word is truth. We walk in the truth of the word. Okay, and we, and we also walk with truth. We don't, we don't lie. Okay, we put this on daily. We put on our, uh, the breastplate of righteousness. We walk in the righteousness of Christ. Who leads us in the path of? Righteousness. Amen. We should not be walking, uh, you know, like this. Do you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> okay. So there's many, but we, we want to deck ourselves in this jewelry. You know, the Bible says that a soul winner will shine like a star in the universe. Hallelujah. Don't you want those garments? Amen. Yeah. We want to we wanna have this kind of... We want to have this kind of recognition in the spirit. There is a recognition in the spirit. You know, your physical jacket, okay, like I was saying earlier on, um, it can speak of different ranks as well, okay? In the army, I'm sure they've got different ranks, different jackets or so on, okay? It's the same in the spirit. And the demons recognize that. You grow. Your, your recognition in the realm of the Spirit grows. I'll tell you a little testimony. When I first, first, the very first time I ever cast out a demon, I was... Sorry? Uh, <laughs> the very first time I ever cast out a demon, I had no recognition in the Spirit. Okay? So we're talking about 26 years ago. Okay? And my, I, I never forget, I was caught unprepared, totally unprepared. I was driving my car, I had a woman sitting in my car with me. Just imagine this, okay? I'm driving my car, this woman sitting next to me, she's holding my baby. This is my second youngest son, his name is Joshua. 
And he must have been about, she was a few months old, I don't know how old he was, okay? he was very young. And he's, she's holding my Joshua on her lap and I'm driving. And suddenly this demon starts speaking to me through this woman who's holding my baby while I'm driving. Okay? So, we had a bit of a dilemma. <laughs> okay. Well, that demon came out. But, I want to say to you, when I first addressed that spirit, I said, you coming out tonight. I said tonight because I wasn't going to do this right there on the road, you know, while I'm, while she's holding my child. <laughs> and it was the first time I was ever going to do this, so I thought I'd better get my husband involved with this one. And, um, and so that night, the both of us did this woman's deliverance. But that devil, I will never forget what that devil said to me at that time. He looks at me and he says, who do you think you are? <laughs> He says, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who do you think you are? <laughs> and the Holy Spirit said to me, that I must say, and I said this, it's not me you have to worry about. It's yeah. Jesus in me That's that it. you have to worry yeah. about. And this woman goes, yeah. and she passed out. <laughs> 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 but the more I dealt with deliverance, the more there was recognition in the realm of the spirit. Those devils recognize you. That's yeah, it. that's, that's right. right. So what I want to say to you is, you grow in anointing. You grow in in you know in in that anointing of whatever it is that you desire to do for God. Amen. You know, salvation and right, uh, salvation and um, is, is just the beginning. Those garments that you wear are like the underwear. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. they, they cover your shame and everything else. But God wants you to be wearing and adorning yourself mm -hmm. in all the wonderful mantles of glory that He has for us. Amen. 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 He wants us to be walking in the supernatural. And it's all paid for already. Yes. Yes. You don't have to pay for it. Isn't that amazing? We can have this amazing wardrobe. Yeah. Women like this, hey. <laughs> Walk in wardrobe with all these clothes that we can just pick out. Amen. Amen. He wants us to have this, this wardrobe. Better than Solomon, okay? Better than the Queen of England, okay? Better than the best Hollywood star and yeah. in the realm of the spirit. It's beautiful and he wants us to have it. And it's a shame that we don't wear it. Because we don't even have to go and buy it. It's all already safe. Amen. And he says, ask of me. Ask of me anything. He says, you don't have because you don't ask. That's right. Okay? A lot of people ask and then they do nothing with it. It's like getting dressed to go out and you don't go out. <laughs> okay? Yeah, sure. So you get all dollied up, get all ready, and then you go back in your uh, room and undress again. Because <laughs> you do nothing with it. God, the, our garments, our spiritual garments are for action. They to do something. And he wants every single one of us to adorn ourselves in this beautiful wardrobe of garments that he has for us. You know, right through the Bible, you'll read about the different robes they wore, you know, the different cloaks they wore, the prophets, and how the one prophet would serve the other prophet. I've got lots of scriptures, but I'm not going into all of that tonight. You've got the Bible, I'm sure. You can sit and study it. You can Google it and just get all the different garments and you know in the physical it talks about garments but actually just look at it in a spiritual measure okay remember the woman with an issue of blood for 12 years I believe that she she when she touched that physical garment she was actually connecting with his spiritual garment yeah, yeah that's right okay wow. mm -hmm. you know his garment fills the temple right. we know what the word yes. says okay yes. he's got amazing garment and she was connecting with his ah, garment. Amen. Yeah. When she touched that physical yeah. garment, yeah. she was yeah. touching his spiritual yeah. garment. Yeah. Okay? And so, remember Joseph? Joseph had a cloak of many colors. Yes. Okay? And when he was young, 
it was stolen from him. But when he was mature and ready, he was given back his finest garments by the Pharaoh. Remember? When he became second to the king, Joseph, is, I'm not going into the story of Joseph today, but Joseph is a type of Jesus. And it's very, you know, he was in the ministry when he was 30, you know, he was also to do a 30 years and so on when he, when he came into ministry. Jesus, um, he, he went down to the lowest place and then he was lifted to the highest place. It's not Joseph, just a lot of pictures and symbolism over there between Joseph and Jesus. Okay? Mm -hmm. But when he became second to the king, the king gave him the finest yes. garments. And let me tell you something, what is the finest garments? Let me tell you something, Joseph, he had governmental authority. So he had governmental garments, leadership, wisdom, wisdom garments, wealth garments. Wisdom garments, wealth garments, interpretation, interpretation of dreams. Okay, he had yes. that as well. Yes. Um, yo, Joseph had lots. We put on We actually put on the Bible instructs us to put on certain garments, like put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Yes. So we can right. choose them and put them on by doing something. We can do something. <laughs> Amen. <coughs> we can put them on by serving a prophet in the Bible days if you're serving a prophet you could tap into that prophet's mantle his cloak his you know his garment as well even today yeah, you even today okay <laughs> so there's garments of favor garments of wealth garments of fire garments of revival garments of miracles and signs and wonders speaking about different anointings that we carry okay mm -hmm. god wants us to carry all of these different anointings and there's no limits Woo! <laughs> we can we can have them all <laughs> okay that's wonderful okay but so being in the tunnel symbolizes being out of sight so what is a christian that's out of sight even it's like that salt that's not good for anything mm -hmm. just to throw away we need to be purposeful. We need to be useful in the Master's hands. Okay? We need to get dressed up in the Spirit. Okay? And start to maintain our garments and add to our garments, but not get our garments stained and frail and diminished. Okay? All right, I don't really want to go too much into everything else here that I've got in my message. I'm going to begin to minister prophetically. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16. It says, for from now on, then, we do not know anyone from a worldly perspective. Even if we have known Christ from a worldly perspective, yet now we no longer know him in this way. The same Paul's saying over here, we don't look at each other by the physical. We're not to look at each other by the physical. Especially not by everyone's fault. Okay? We are to acknowledge each other by the spiritual. You see, you can have a pastor or a prophet in your midst or a whatever gifting God brings your way. Okay? Maybe let's talk about your pastor. Okay? You can have your pastor, but you can choose them as your buddy. You know, those poor speaking, even if you knew Jesus in the physical, he's talking there to these uh, Corinthians. So you know, if, if you, knew, you know Jesus in the physical, if you knew him or, known, or have known him in the physical, don't recognize him like that anymore. In other words, recognize his calling, his anointing. That's what you tap into. Because you can miss it if you recognize Jesus as your buddy. Amen. You want to recognize Jesus as what he's carrying and who he is. Amen. The Christ, the anointed one. Okay? So Paul was even talking to them about Jesus who they knew. So so my point is, 
we can miss here today. But if you look at me in the physical realm, or if you look at me by the spirit, what am I carrying? What am I? I'm a gift to the body of Christ. I'm not boasting in anything. That's my calling. That's my purpose. And every one of you are a gift to the body of Christ. Amen. You can choose to be or not to be. It's up to you. But I know I'm a gift to the body of Christ. Amen. That's Amen. my calling. That's my purpose. And I just want to be a blessing Amen. for God Hallelujah. in His hand and in the Master's hand. Okay? And if you look at me in the physical, oh, what she wearing, what she dressed in, what, you know, what does she look like, what are you going to miss it? You know, take him as it. Tap into the gift. Tap into the anointing Amen. that I'm carrying and that I am. Yes. Amen. Okay? Amen. Right. Okay, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Then you have the prodigal son who was given the best robe. I want us to all close our eyes tonight. Father God, you're calling back to you the prodigals, Lord. The prodigals that you want to give you want to give them the best robe, Lord. You want to wrap them in your love, Lord. The garments of love, Lord. You want to wrap them in your garments of love, Lord. The Lord says to you tonight, my son, my daughter, it's been long enough, long enough, and it's time to come, come back. It's time to come back. And let me wrap my arms of love around you. Let me put my garments of love on you. The Lord says to you, my son and my daughter, it's time. It's time. It's time. Stop wallowing in the mud. Stop wallowing with the pigs. It's time to let my love transform your life and bring you into the best place. In my kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. While everybody's eyes are closed, I want to ask tonight if there's anybody that would like me to pray, let's pray this prayer tonight of the prodigal. I see that hand. Anybody else want to just slip up your hand, the prodigal, coming back to Jesus tonight. Coming back to Jesus tonight. I see that hand too. Anyone else? You know, the Lord's love is so wide, you can't get around it. It's so deep, you can't get under it. So high, you can't get over it. He wants to wrap you in His love tonight. God brought you here for a divine purpose. And He wants you to reconcile with Him tonight. Turn your heart back to God. Please, just put up your hand. Please put up your hand tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I see that hand as well. God, there's hands going up all around here tonight. Come on. Thank you, Jesus, for the prodigals, Lord. You want to wrap your love around them tonight. Okay, those people, please just, I want everybody to pray this prayer with tonight, okay? Let's pray this prayer of salvation to mm -hmm. um, people of God. Let's, let's do this together. And let's support these people that are giving their heart back to Jesus. Say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I recognize, and I recognize that, I, that I need you, Lord. That I need you, Lord. And, I recognize and I recognize that I've strayed from you, Lord. I, I ask you to forgive my sins. Move it as far as the east is from the west. Move it as far as the east is from the west. Never to be remembered again. Never to be remembered again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that your word says. Thank you that your word says. That you wash me as white as snow. That you wash me as white as snow. I ask you to come into my life today. I ask you to come into my life today. And restore me to my rightful place. And restore me to my rightful place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Speed up my spirit. Growth, Speed up my spiritual growth that I may grow quickly that I may grow quickly that I may run and not walk that I may run and not walk spiritually Lord spiritually Lord in Jesus name in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Congratulate each one that recommitted your heart to Jesus. I want to say to you, it's vital to join a church, okay? It's vital to join a church, not just any church. You want to go to a church that does discipleship, okay? 
Very important. It's no good sitting in the back of the church and your life doesn't change. You have to get into discipleship very quickly because remember what I said? The devil goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. He preys on people's ignorance. Yes. Okay? So you're stepping, you've just stepped out from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. But you can't operate in the kingdom of light by the principles of the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. They're two different pr set of principles if you want to get the right results in your life. Okay? A lot of people, they give their heart to Jesus, but they don't get discipled. And so what happens? They continue to walk in the principles of this world, and they... And they, they, there's only failure waiting for them because they, they are applying the wrong principles. So they, can't, they don't get the right results. Okay? So it's very important to get into a church. I know there's a lot of teachings out there. You don't need to be in a church. Let me tell you something. You definitely need to be in a church. Because when you're on your own, just think, my husband always uses this example. If you take a fire and you take a coal and you separate it from the fire, it's going to get cold yes. and wither yes. and die. Yes. You need to be in the fire. You Amen. need to be. Let me tell you, me as an individual, I will never stay out of church. Why? Because when you go into church, you get a spiritual cleansing. Yes, the anointing in the church of the corporate, the corporate anointing. That's in the, in the church. When you come together, it's not about the building, it's about when you come together, mm -hmm. worshipping God. That anointing, it washes you. Like, you. like in the physical, you go and get in the shower. <coughs> it helps you to stay in, the, in, the, in that uh, yes. path of holiness. Amen. Okay? That's right. It's very important. Yes. That's okay? right. Yeah. I'm not here to say, go to this church or go to this church. Find a church that's on fire for Jesus. <laughs> okay? All right? Okay. So I've said my message, but I want to say to you today, I want to, mm -hmm. I want to challenge you to, to, to be constantly, what am I wearing? What does my spiritual garments look like? Very important. Amen. Okay? Yes. Alright, so that was the message tonight. Did you want to say something about it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I love you, my God. <laughs> ah. <laughs> She's amazing, amen. Yes, yes. and uh, God is uh, uses her really powerful. She, she many times goes to more countries than I do, but anyway, it's really good to be here. <clears throat> and we're going to prophesy over a lot of you tonight, and uh, my wife is going to do that. And um, next week, Tuesday, I will be here. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't miss next week, Tuesday, I think we'll have to put a tent out here. Oh, <laughs> God. The fire of God and the Holy Ghost. You. But I know my wife's going to minister to you, most of you, then I'll minister to you on Tuesday night next week, same time. Uh, same time, yes? Yes, yes, yes sir. And so that uh, <coughs> we can uh, just be a blessing to you as the body of Christ. Do you want to... I want to pick up the offering before we start prophesying on people. So if you don't mind, this is for the, uh, let's give to the kingdom of God tonight. <coughs> God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Yes, he don't, uh, you can never uh, give God. That's right. Amen. Um, dear and I try to flap ya. To get you to the United States from India, but it doesn't work. We have to buy an airplane ticket. <laughs> so it costs a lot of money for us to get here. You don't have wings? No, we tried that, but um, it wasn't possible. So, you know, we, uh, we live by faith, we trust God. Amen. And we know that God, people are Jesus. Marie. 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 So we can go free, carry on preaching the gospel. Whenever God sends us, my wife and I are willing, Yahweh our Lord, and the desire, here I am, Lord, use me. Come on now. Get radical in your faith in this year. Amen. 2019 is going to be the best year you've ever had. Come on, someone. Yes. Yeah. Don't miss next week, Tuesday. If you 
that you'll have to bring some safety uh, uh, seat belts. Uh, this, this, this little, what do, what do they call this place? Yes, a trailer. A trailer. This trailer's going to take off. I'll bring my parachute. I'm telling you, there's a lot of those rockets are going to be launched from this place. Heck, we can bring parachutes if we need them. <laughs> For those out there, I want to tell you something. I don't care what you've gone through in life. I was a drug addict. Today I preach all over the world by the Amen. grace of God. Amen. God can change your situation. Yes, Lord. I don't care what you're going through, what you've gone through. Come next week and I'll tell you how to get out of it. Amen. 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 Next week, Tuesday, I'll teach you and train you how to get out of your situation. And God will turn 2019 to be the best year that you've ever had. Yes, Lord. Come on yes. now. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, Father, we release the prophetic mantle, the prophetic anointing, the, the, the hearts of faith yet tonight. Lord, that you just touch them in a supernatural way. Father, that the hearts will be open to receive from the prophetic Lord. And I release the faith that is needed tonight in Jesus' name. If you've got a sickness and disease on your body, just touch your body right now. Because God is a miracle working God. Father, I rebuke every sickness and every disease, every pain and every uh, spirit of uh, cancer ira, and iniquity of, and the spirit of infirmity, spirit of iniquity, I break the power of the, the people's lives, Lord. I release 1 Peter 2, 24, by His stripes. You are healed. Arthritis be healed. Heart disease be healed. Diabetes be healed now in the name of Jesus. I am rooted from your soul and your body right now in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord, and we give you praise for a testimony of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, sorry, I just um, felt in my heart as well that I delivered a message to you that you need to tap into, okay? So everybody close eyes. Let's close eyes. And let's ask God for those mentors. The first thing you're going to do is ask God to forgive us, okay? So that we can have our mentors, our garments washed. And then we're going to ask God for the, those, those garments that we want to wear, okay? Have any of you got any desires of anything that you want to wear? Okay, so let's do this one. Say, Heavenly Father, and actually before we start, just I want you to verbally say it, but just under your breath. Nobody else needs to hear it. I don't want to hear it, okay? Um, but just say, under your breath, just say whatever it is that you want God to forgive you for, you know, so that your, your garments can get washed tonight. Okay? Uh, with the blood of Jesus, yes. And then we're going to ask God for those other heavenly garments. Okay? So let's say this together. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I recognize the sin that I have had. And I ask you to forgive me. Just say that thing under your breath. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, and say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, take it away right now. I ask you to wash me. And wash my garments as white as snow. And I ask you, Lord, to loose that sin from me, my soul, my body and spirit. I loose my from it in Jesus name now Lord I ask you to 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 cover me to cover me with your beautiful garments your garments that I may be used of you to bring blessing to others Lord I ask you for those garments the garments of intercession the garments of integrity the garments of humility, the garments of, of wealth, garments of praise, garments of fire, garments of revival, garments of miracles and healing. Lord, all the gifts of the Spirit, let them flow through my life. 
Your spirit of power. Your spirit of knowledge. Your spirit of wisdom. Your spirit of the fear of the Lord. Your spirit of counsel and understanding. Lord, all the wonderful garments that you have for me. I ask of you for that. Join me, Lord. As a soul winner. As a soul winner. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to say to you, go into that wardrobe any time. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Go into that wardrobe any time. Close your eyes and say, Lord, Lord, what garment can I pick out? What garment can I pick out? I want to walk. I want to walk. In in your glory. In, in your, your glory. glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord. I know some of you must be confused because tonight was supposed to be Pastor William and on the 19th, Pastor Jack. Well, they've just been traveling for six hours, so he was really tired, so he asked me to take a switch. I said, Praise mm -hmm. God. <laughs> I was driving all the way. She never drove. <laughs> I drove. Oh, Lord. You must have been tired. Uh, yes. I feel sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Amen. You need to recognize that it's not me, it's the Spirit of God. Yeah, yeah. And He knows everything. That's right. Yes. He knows everything. Okay, so I'm going to just walk around and just minister to you. Oh, by the way, I'm not ministering to anybody that doesn't record it. Because that shows me no faith. Get out your cell phones. Most people have got cell phones these days. Most people have got a cell phone that can record. Well, somebody can record for you. If you don't have your own cell phone yet, somebody can record it for you. I promise you, you'll walk out here. You think you'll remember it. You will not remember it. The devil will rob that prophetic word from us. How do you record? The Bible says that you must wage war with your prophetic word. There's many have neglected their prophetic words and have shipwrecked their faith. Let me tell you, the devil also hears the prophetic words and he wants to stop it. So you need to wage a war once you get a prophetic word. Okay? You need to wage a war, you need to cover that prophetic word, and you need to call it it. Because let me tell you, we don't walk by stuff, we walk by faith. Everything that we need in this, as it, the devil will try and put doubt in unbelief. Okay? Alright, are you going to record for this gentleman? Can you start recording? No problem. Can I just come back to you? Or? Come back to you. Okay, can I minister? Oh, you got a call? You got a, can you record? Yeah, and then I come back to you? No problem. No problem. Okay, are you ready? You ready? Thank you, Jesus. What is your name? Brandon. Father, thank you for Brandon. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The Lord says I'm releasing to you amazing things because I'm, 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 I'm declaring over you new levels of faith. The Lord says it's time for new levels of faith. And the Lord says that you've asked me and you want, you want it. And you're crying out to me for new levels of faith. The Lord says it's time to step out. And the Lord says I will fill your mouth. I will fill your mouth, the Lord says. Just begin to speak for me. And I will show that you, that I'm able to demonstrate the things, the very things that you're believing me for. The Lord says it's time, it's time, it's time for the new mantles. The new mantles. The Lord says to you, my son, <clears throat> incline your ear to me. Because I'm going to give you instruction of what to do, where to go, how to do it. Amen? Is that okay? Alright. <laughs> I'm just ministering. Once the flow stops, I stop. Okay? Alright? It might be short, it might be long. That's it. I'm sorry, okay? I'm just telling you, I'm only God's messenger. Don't get cross with me either. <laughs> it's what he says, okay? Alright, there you go. What's uh, your name? John. Jonathan. John. John, 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 hallelujah for John, thank you Father God, thank you Lord for this man, thank you Father, the Lord says that my son you've been hiding for too long, uh, you've, in, in actual fact I've been hiding you for too long, 
the Lord says it's, it's, uh, the season now has come to an end, but, but instead of changing the season, you've kind of stayed hidden. But the Lord says, it's, I'm, I'm removing that, I'm removing that, that veil that's been over you. That is, uh, that, uh, the Lord says, it's time now to arise. It's time now to step up. The Lord says to you, my son, you know that I've been working in your heart and in your life uh, for some time about certain things. And the Lord says there's certain things that you need to bring in order and bring in line. And the Lord says, yes, I want you to do that. And I want you to do it in a hurry and stop procrastinating about it. Because the Lord says to you, my son, this is also a cause for delay in your life. But the Lord says that, that, uh, that things will speed up in your life if you, once you put those things in order that I've asked you to. And the devil's trying to make you believe it's actually not a big deal, but actually it is. Because the Lord says it's a blessing blocker. Does that make sense? Yes. It's a blessing blocker. And the Lord says to you, I want that blessing blocker removed. Because the Lord says, I do answer your prayers. I'm waiting on you. Hallelujah. Okay? You got it ready? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. All right. What's your name? Pastor Brenda. You, Pastor Brenda? Father God, I thank you for Pastor Brenda, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in her life, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that you're challenging her as well, Lord. You're challenging her. I see the Lord stretching your wineskin. I see Him stretching your wineskin. You believe certain things in a certain way, but I see the Lord changing even, um, even the way you see things. I just see the Lord giving you new wineskins because He's enlarging you. And just like uh, Jabez pray, prayed and said, uh, oh, oh, Lord, Lord, that you would bless me. The Lord says, for greater territory, there's certain things that must change. And the Lord says, I want to give you more territory. But the Lord says, I want certain things to change in you first. And the Lord says, there's, the, there's certain things that just the, the way that you look at certain situations and all that. The Lord says, I'm, I'm, I'm changing your wine skin. And the Lord says, because I have more for you. I want to bless you. Uh, mm -hmm. The Lord says to you, my daughter, I have international appointments for you. <laughs> international appointments for you. And the Lord says, I'm, I'm preparing you. Please get ready, get ready, get ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you recognize your Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. That's all. Thank, thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, I see the Lord putting this purple um, robe around you. The oh, robe, this purple, got, got some cloak around you, a, a, a purple one. And the Lord says, it's royalty, my daughter, because you're my daughter. Ooh. And the Lord says, as you worship me, my daughter, I'm increasing your authority in the realm of the spirit. So worship me more, worship me more, worship me more. Because the Lord says to you, my daughter, I'm bringing breakthrough in the realm of the spirit as you worship me. The Lord says, there's been things that have been distracting you. But the Lord says, get back to that pure worship. And the Lord says, as you worship me, things are going to change. Things are going to change. That setback is going to be eliminated. Yeah. And the Lord says to you, my daughter, it's time to step up. Step up a notch in your worship. Because the Lord says, in that realm of worship, I'm going to begin to speak to you <coughs> about things that you did not know. And the Lord says, I'm going to begin to give you, and uh, you're going to walk in that, that strong gift of knowledge. And the Lord says that I truly, truly, it's going to bring a lot of change in your life. It's going to bring breakthrough in your life. The Lord says, just enter in. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Would you like me to have the to Yes. yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this pastor. What's your pastor call? Pastor call. That wasn't a gift of knowledge. <laughs> I met him the other day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for Pastor Carl. 
I thank you, Lord, for what you said. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord says to you, my son, I put a very different anointing on the inside of you. And it's a, an anointing that, uh, that uh, it, 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 it's concerning uh, raising people. It's concerning changing people. And you get frustrated sometimes when you, when you, just, when you just see people not interested uh, when there's so much more for them. And the Lord says, I've given you keys, I've given you tools. And the Lord says, truly, truly, I'm pouring out my anointing upon you to break open the word in a deeper way. But the Lord says to you, my son, I've also given you anointing to rally people. And, and it's almost been, it's been stifled. There's been blessing blockers in that area. And the Lord says to you, my son... <clears throat> It's time for you to throw off, to throw off the, 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 the things that people have said. Throw off the things that um, how people have uh, labeled you or put you in a box. The Lord says you're not that in that box any longer. That box, that box is destroyed in the name of Jesus. The Lord says to you, my son, I am causing that, <coughs> I'm causing you. To seek me more than you ever have in your life before. Because the Lord says to you, my son, I want to cause the doors to o of opportunity to open for you. And the Lord says, I'm sending you to people. There's like little groups of people that have been, um, that have been really uh, in need of someone to lead them, someone to help them. I'm sending you to those people. It's almost like they've been pushed aside or they've been burned stones. They're people that have been hurt in the church. They're people that have kind of given up or fallen off the wagon. The Lord says, I'm sending you to those people that's going to get them again onto the right road and is going to disciple them and is going to help them to grow and become strong oaks for me. The Lord says, I'm sending you to these people. And it's like, uh, the people that have lost hope, the people that are um, that just um, uh, they want the Lord, but they feel like they're too scared to step back into a church. And the Lord says, I'm going to use you to reach out to those people and even little groups of people um, that I'm sending to the Lord says, I'm going to use you in this way. And you're truly going to bring transformation in the lives of others. Thank you, Lord Thank you, Father God, for this woman. Yes, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, we love you so much, Lord. You're so amazing. You're so wonderful. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. You're so adorable. You're so beautiful. You're so faithful. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so you're recording for this lady. What's her name? What's your name? Mary. Thank you, Father, for Mary, Lord. The Lord shows me uh, things coming against you. I just see it's like the it's like the waves of the sea hitting against you. And the Lord says to you, my daughters, just stand firm. Just stand firm, because I am with you. The Lord says to you, no matter what this one says, what that one says, what situations come your way, just stand firm. Just stand firm and trust me. The Lord says to you, my daughter, I will fight for you. Um, Exodus 14, 14. You just need to be still. I will fight for you. And the Lord says to you, my daughter, I truly am pouring in the oil and the wine. The Lord says, let my spirit refresh you. Let my spirit encourage you. Let my spirit build you up. The Lord says to you, my daughter, cast off anything that anyone says to you. I just break the power of negative words that have been spoken out. Negative words, negative words, negative words. I just cancel those negative words that have been spoken out against your life. The Lord says to you, my daughter, I've called you. To be a blessing, and no matter what this one says, don't hold back, but be the blessing I've called you to be. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What's your name? Priscilla. Priscilla. Thank you, Father, for. You want to just do that? I'll yeah, come back okay. to you right now. 
Uh, anyone I'm, else? I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. I'm just conscious of the time because I think people have maybe got work tomorrow or they've got children. Should tell you until one o'clock in the morning. Oh, <laughs> oh, is that okay? All right. No problem. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. What's your name, sorry? Priscilla. Priscilla. Thank you, Father, for Priscilla. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the the precious woman that she is, Lord. Yes, yes. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in her heart and life. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Priscilla, the Lord shows me you, uh, your heart just hurting, 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 hurting. I don't know what it's about, but the Lord just says to you, my daughter, I'm here to mm -hmm. counsel you, to encourage you. And the Lord says to you, my daughter, uh, allow me to heal you. Allow me to go into the deepest recesses of your heart and heal you. Allow me, just soak in my presence, the Lord says, and I will truly, truly remove those things that have uh, hampered you. The, even in your thoughts, it's like the devil tries to bring back thoughts and regrets and, and you know, things from the past. And the Lord says to you, my daughter, just soak in my presence and allow me to heal you. The Lord says, I want to give you a brand new vision for your future so that you don't uh, be ever looking back. Uh, the Lord says, just trust me, my daughter. I'm going to help you and I'm going to give you a new vision for your future. Soak in my presence. Soak in my presence. And allow me to do the work in your heart. I see the Lord doing like an operation in your heart, spiritual operation in your heart. And I just see the Lord just removing some things that have, uh, that have really <clears throat> wounded you in the past. And I just see the Lord healing you. And I just see the Lord breathing upon you, upon you and giving you new life. And I just see the Lord putting you onto that path of success. That's fine. And that's okay. Praise the Lord. Try say today, thank God for technology. Thank God for technology. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What is your name? Sandra. Thank you, Father, for Sandra. Thank you, Father God, for the woman that she is, Lord, and that she tries her best. And the Lord says to you, my daughter, I love that you try your best. And the Lord says, I'm anointing you to go further than you've ever been before, to stretch yourself wider than you ever have before, because I'm sending your way people that needs to be cared for, that needs to be helped. The Lord says, I'm sending you people that needs a lot of care. And the Lord says, I know that you are capable and my spirit is upon you to care for them and to love them. Love them. Love them. They need lots of love. They need lots of love. They're full of bruises. They're full of problems. They're full of uh, nonsense. But the Lord says, I love them. And I'm sending them to you so that you can clean them up. That you can uh, uh, clean their wounds. That you can uh, that you can help them to become all that I've called them to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Okay. What's your name? Ruby. Thank you, Father, for Ruby Lord. Thank you, Father God. Lord, and even as a Ruby Lord, Lord, she carries your blood. She believes in the blood and the power of the blood. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you're stirring her up, Lord, to set the captive free. You're stirring her up to set the captive free. Thank you, Father God. And the Lord says to you, my daughter, truly I am in the midst of you doing a new work and a new thing. The Lord says that, that it's time for the new thing. And the Lord says that you've, uh, you've inclined your ear to teachings and this and that. The Lord says, but I want to teach you some stuff. 
And I want to help you to help others to get set free. The Lord says, my daughter, there's power in my blood. And you're going to tap in, in a new measure, a new dimension. And the Lord says, as you trust me, you're going to see people set free. You are going to be a powerful house. For me, the Lord says, you are going to be a powerhouse for me. The Lord says, yes, my daughter, that when you point your finger, it will be as and my finger being pointed at the devil. And the Lord says, I'm going to use you mightily. The Lord says, it's time to arrive and not to allow the enemy to, to pull you this way or that way or to take you off of what I'm saying to you. The Lord says to you, my daughter, I've called you to, to bring about change. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What's your name? Rudy. Rudy. Thank you, Father God. Rudy, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Rudy, there's some things that if you just close the cupboard on certain things, you like pack them away in the cupboard nice and neat, and close that cupboard, and you don't want to see them, you don't want to think about them, but the Lord says, yes, my daughter, it's time for me to open those cupboard doors and to get some release in your heart and your life. The Lord yeah. says, I want to release you, I want to heal you, I want to set you free of all those things that you don't want to face. But the Lord says, my grace is upon you, my daughter. My grace is upon you, my daughter. My grace is sufficient, my daughter. My daughter, my grace is sufficient. And you will find in that healing that the rivers will flow through your life in such a powerful way because of the healing that I'm bringing to you. You didn't go through those things for nothing. <laughs> you didn't go through those things for nothing. The Lord says to you, my daughter, I'm going to cause your rivers to run so strong, so strong, so powerful, unstoppable. And the Lord says, yes, my daughter. And all those things you went through will become healing rivers for others. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Amen. Amen. She's going to record for me. Um, yes. Okay. Can I put my hand on the phone? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this wonderful woman, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the gentle spirit. Thank you, Lord. People misunderstand her. Sorry, what's your name? Javida. 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 Thank you, Father, for Javida. Thank you for what you sang to her. The Lord shows me misunderstandings. The Lord says to you, my daughter, people have misunderstood you. There's been a lot of misunderstandings. And the devil's actually tried to get his finger in there and he's tried to um, bring confusion um, between loved ones, between um, uh, you know, uh, those people that you really love. The devil has tried to bring division and, and all, a lot of misunderstandings. But the Lord says to you, my daughter, it's been the devil's handiwork. It's not from me. And the Lord says, my daughter, I, I, I'm, I'm giving you insight into the situation so that you know it's not personal. It's not personal. The Lord says it's not personal. Uh, this is uh, to all the devil's tactics. And the Lord says to you, as you take away the, 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 the implication of it being personal, the Lord says you'll be able to fight this, stand and fight this war, this battle. And the Lord says, I call you victorious. I call you victorious. I call you victorious. The Lord says, what the devil has meant for harm, I will turn it around for good. I will turn it around for good. And the Lord says, I will lift you up. Thank you, Father. Sorry, what's your name? Stephen. Thank you, Father, for Stephen. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this life. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this life. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this life. Thank you, Stephen, it's like you've been an open target for the enemy. It's like the devil has tried to target you over and over and over, and he's trying to break your faith, but you keep coming back stronger. And the Lord says, my son, I'm lifting you up, and I'm going to make you such a testimony. The Lord says, you are a testimony. But I'm even making you a stronger testimony. And the Lord says, my son, I'm lifting you up. And the Lord says, just brush off. Just brush off the dust from your garments. Just brush it off. The devil's trying to put...
the disappointment on you. He's tried to put discouragement on you. He's tried to put all kinds of things upon you to cause you to, to, to step aside instead of step ahead. And God says, I'm taking you ahead, my son. I'm taking you ahead. And the Lord says, as you walk forward with me, we are going to do some great and mighty stuff together. <laughs> great and mighty stuff. We're going to pierce the enemy's camp. We're going to throw the kingdom of darkness down. And the Lord says, my son, I've given you, I've caused you to walk in a measure of power, but the Lord says, I'm taking you into new levels of power, new levels of deliverance. Uh, the, 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 the gift of discerning of spirits is going to be sharpened up strong. It's like the devil is trying to deceive you. Sometimes you've actually been deceived by people. But the Lord says, my son, I'm giving you a strong discernment that you will not be easily deceived by people. Thank you, Father God, for this woman. Thank you, Jesus. God is faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Trudy, I see almost like a crutch in your life, something that you've been holding on to, and you know uh, that God wants to be your crutch. He wants to be the one you hold on to and not on to whatever it is that you're leaning on. God says it's time to just trust Him. It's time to, to, to reposition yourself. That's what I'm saying. Reposition yourself. Realign yourself. The Lord says to you, my daughter, I'm pouring on the oil of joy. I'm pouring on the joy of the Lord in your life in such a powerful way. The devils try to steal your joy. And the Lord says, it's time to laugh at the devil. It's time to laugh at the devil. The Lord says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And the Lord says, it's time to start to laugh. It's time to arise in my joy and let the enemy be scattered. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because the devil has tried to just surround you and just try to bombard you and try to irritate you and try mm -hmm. to upset you. And the Lord says, it's time to put on my joy and laugh and position yourself for my blessings. The Lord says to you, my daughter, I release to you today that this, my daughter, you have my favor. <laughs> you have my favor. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Are you recording? I am. I you. You are recording? Thank you, Jesus. What is your name? Heather. Heather. Thank you, Father, for Heather. Thank you, Father, for what you are saying to Heather. Thank you, Lord. You love Heather. You love Heather. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Shatarando sheketi tarakasaka, ranga saka ranga shendere sekeri andarasika. Heather, I just see it reminds me of feather. <laughs> Sounds funny, but it's 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 brought me into this. You know, there's different weights in, in boxing. There's like feather weight, but the Lord says I'm making you into heavyweight. <laughs> not featherweight, heavyweight. Amen. The Lord says, I'm taking you into the realm of heavyweight. The Lord says, I'm taking you into promotion in the things of the spirit. And the Lord says, you've been, you've been seeking me. You want me to move on your behalf. And I am. I am. I am moving on your behalf. And the Lord says to you, my daughter, I'm moving even behind the scenes. You don't even realize what I'm doing. But the Lord says, I have heard your prayers and I, ha and I am moving on your behalf. And the Lord says, trust me, my daughter, because you're going to see what I'm going to do is going to be a wow factor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus for this one, Melissa. Melissa. Thank you, Father, for Melissa, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Jesus, for Melissa, Lord, for what you're doing in her heart, Father God, that she would even travel far to get something from you. She's hungry. She wants from you what you have for her. Yes. The Lord says to you, my daughter, I've seen your determination, and I'm going to honor you for that. And the Lord says to you, my daughter, truly, I'm putting people around you that's going to help you to get to the next level. The Lord says, my daughter, I want to lift you, I want to, and I breathe upon you new life, new life. I see you digging for gems in the, in the sea. I see you digging for gems. The Lord says, yes, my daughter, uh, a part of your determination is going to bring forth and crack open the jewels, the jewels in the word that's going to bring change in your life. Revelation in the word, things that I have for you, the Lord says, truly I'm going to impart it to you. Impart, I'm, I release an impartation in the name of Jesus. I release the impartation of the prophetic anointing. Shaka taba saka ronga shaka rika taba shandara sutu rika taraba sharabanduro sukuru kushene rika taraba sharabandara basaka roka taraba sharabasaka lord she desires the prophetic i release it to her lord i release it lord that she would have dreams and visions and interpretation of dreams and an understanding of things concerning spiritual matters in jesus name if you want any of this, say yes, Lord, me too. It's not a respect of persons. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What is your name? Marie. Marie. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for Marie, Lord. Thank you for Marie who sits at your feet, Lord. She loves you, Lord, and she sits at your feet. And be like Mary sitting at your feet, Lord. And the Lord says, I love that about you. I love that you sit at my feet. And the Lord says, my daughter, I'm going to show you things that you did not know. I'm going to speak to you and lead you and guide you and, and, and into amazing pathways. The Lord says, I'm going to send you to this one and that one. And I'm going to give you words of knowledge for them. I'm going to give you uh, scriptures for them. I'm going to give you instructions for them. The Lord says, yes, my daughter, you are my handmaiden, handpicked, because you choose to sit at my feet. And what you deliver for me is very valuable. It's very valuable. The life that it brings to those around you and those that I send you to, it's a very valuable because it brings, it, 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 it delivers um, a part of me to them. It delivers part of me to them. Don't underestimate your value, the Lord says, because you are highly favored. Hallelujah. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. What's your name? Neil. Neil, are you going to record? I am. Thank you, Father, for Neil, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father God, for he's your son, Lord. Thank you for Neil, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing in his life, Lord. Thank you that he wants to please you, Lord. He wants to please you. Thank you, Lord. And God says to you, Neil, my son, I'm giving you sons. I'm giving you sons, spiritual sons. I'm giving you people to pour your heart into and your life into. The Lord says, as I show you something, you show them. That's what I want you to do. So that you can extend my kingdom. So that you can um, uh, bring life to others. And so that you can disciple. The Lord says, I have a discipleship anointing on you. But it's one of um, doing. It's one of doing. So like you, as you, as you walk... As you walk and you do, like Jesus did with the disciples, they went in twos, two by two by two, and they did things. The Lord says, I'm going to cause you, I'm going to start to show you things and instruct you to do things. You're going to learn principles, and then you're going to impart them to others. And that's what I see for you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for this woman, Lord. What's your name? Mandy. 
<laughs> Mandy, thank you, Father, for Mandy, Lord. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in her life, Lord. I see you crying out to God. I see you crying out to God in faith. Lord, I need you to do this. And the Lord says, my daughter, I've heard you. I've heard your cries. And the Lord says to you, my daughter, I am moving on your behalf. And the Lord says, my timing is perfect. Trust me, my daughter. Trust me, my daughter. My timing is perfect. I haven't abandoned you. I haven't forgotten you. I hear what you're saying. And the Lord says, I am moving and dispatching and matching angels to demons. I am sorting things and doing things in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord says, do not think that I have abandoned you or that I'm not doing what you're asking me. The Lord says, I am. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father God, as well, Lord. I'm just going to carry on ministering to you. Mandy, carry on recording. Mm -hmm. Shandara suturu shereke seke di araba sakaraba shandara sikaraba shindere seke yandara sakaraba sherebe seke di araba sika. God says, My daughter, I have so much more for you. You're not, you are not where you need to be. The Lord says, You need to realize that I have much more for you. What you see for your life is very, very Minimal, but God says, I have so much more for you. You need to raise the bar in your life. You need to expect more in your walk with God. The Lord says that I'm calling you to be a, a soldier in my army. The Lord says, I'm calling you to step up in my kingdom and to be more active in, the, in, in what I have for you. And the Lord says, as you trust me, you're going to see that I will use you in mighty, wonderful ways. But the Lord says uh, that it's time for you to start to increase your vision in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Shanduru sukuru kushara katara kasa karaba shende de seke yandara si karaba shende. I see different rivers in your life. I see different rivers. Don't be confused about the fact that you know some sometimes uh, it's like I, I need to know where I, what am I, and all this kind of thing. God says, don't don't limit yourself because I have different rivers in your life, and I want you to flow differently. The Lord says, you, I just I don't know what the rivers are, but I just the the point is that there's different rivers flowing. Uh, in your life and the Lord says don't limit yourself um, to a specific kind of calling or whatever the Lord says no my daughter because I've put multiple anointings and giftings in your life and allow me to use you in many different ways hallelujah Amen. 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 Okay, can somebody record for this gentleman? I will. Yes, okay. please. Okay. What's your name? Mike. Go ahead. Thank you, Father, for Michael. Thank you, Lord, for Michael. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for Michael. God says, I have more for you, Michael. Much, much more. Much, much more. You, it's like you... Prepare to settle for the bones when God says, I have big stakes for you. <laughs> God says, it's, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm removing, um, I'm removing once your, your, mental, your mental understanding of, of what I have for you. And the Lord says, uh, right now, you're not trusting me for, for what it is that I have for you. The Lord says, you are just, you need to raise the bar. You need to raise the bar. You need to raise the bar because the Lord says to you, you're living uh, uh, even financially on a much lower um, amount financially than what I have for you. I have much more for you financially, much more for you. And the Lord says, as you trust me, my, my son, as you trust me with the new ideas and the new uh, directions and things that I want to take you in, the Lord says, I truly will open doors of opportunity for you, financial doors of opportunity for you. The Lord says, doors that won't shut on you, but doors that will stay open for you. It's almost like the, the devil has shut doors for you, uh, uh, to stop you. But the Lord says, I'm opening doors that, that, that no man can shut. And the Lord says, 
says to you, my, my son, that I truly am increasing you financially. And as you trust me, the Lord says, um, I'm going to bring divine connections along your path. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Look at your name again. John. 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 John the beloved, eh? <laughs> All right, so where is the recording for John? Are you... Can you record for John? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for John. John, Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in John's life, Lord. Thank you, Father. John, the Lord shows me he's opening up the Word of God he's, to you. You've, uh, you've always believed a certain way about certain things, but I just see the Lord illuminating certain scriptures for you and causing you to go in a new path. And the Lord says, my son, I'm breathing upon you. I'm breathing upon you fresh manna. I'm breathing upon you um, a new opportunity and a and, and new direction. And I just see the Lord um, uh, connecting you um, in, in such a way that's going to be such a blessing for you. It's going to be such a blessing for you. I see you're learning new things um, and, and, and really an excitement in your spirit because you're learning new things. You want to grow in God and I see God breathing upon you um, uh, new, new and exciting things in your walk with God. It's almost like you've seen this and you've seen that and you've seen so many things, but I just see new things now. Discovering new things and it's going to be like a little child in a chocolate factory. Just so excited about God for the new things that God's bringing your way. Amen. Thank you. Hello. You recording? Thank you, Jesus. What's your name? Greg. Greg. Thank you, Father, for Greg. Thank you, Father, for Greg. Greg, I have no idea what you're doing, but I see the Lord wants to use you and things to do with inner healing. So get with the plot. Whatever you're doing in your life, get with the plot. God, There's things in your own life that God wants to heal you and deliver you from, but he also wants to use you as a blessing to bring other people into that place of inner healing. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. What's your name? My name is Andrew. Andrew. Thank you, Father, for Andrew, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing in his life, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know. I just get this romance. I don't know what that means to you. Just see the Lord just breathing upon you in that area of your life, bringing a bit of excitement and life and, 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 and repairs and all kinds of things in your life uh, concerning this area. I just see the Lord doing something fresh and new in your life in this area. And so the Lord says to you, my son, trust me, trust me. It's like things went pear shaped, but God says, I'm bringing, I'm bringing new life. I see new life. Thank you, Jesus. New life. New excitement once again. Hallelujah. Amen. Is that everyone? Hallelujah. I think that is. There you go. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Did you want to have a break? Did you want to have a break? Is he going record it? Okay, get it ready and then he's going to record it. Are you ready? Yeah, you can just send the recording to my email. Thank you so much. You're a blessing. Hey, Neil, it's the whole in the world. Did you record it? How can I record it? How can I record it for him? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. 
Yandosha Karanga Sherengesi Karaka Sharaka Saka Aranga Sherengesi Karaka Sharanga Sherengesi Karaka Shanda. I just see the Lord, the Lord, I see the Lord pulling out the carpet from underneath you. Yes. Okay? Yes. Because you've been standing firm in certain whatever, I don't know, but God says it's, uh, he's changing things. Ooh, yes. He's changing things. Yes. I don't want to put my finger on anything that I don't need to, but God is speaking to you. There's things that uh, you've been standing firm in or maybe trusting, but God says, I'm changing everything around. I'm changing everything around and things are not going to be the same as they are now. Okay? And God's uh, just turning your life around and doing a brand new thing in your life and he's giving you faith to believe in a different direction yes. but God says I haven't um, I, 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 I remain faithful to you but I have a, a different plan I have a different plan okay so I'm going to just deliver that to you and leave that with you amen Father I release faith to believe faith to believe Lord faith to believe Father I release the gift of faith Hallelujah. Ronga Sakaraba Shanda. Release the gift of faith. Hallelujah. Shokaranga Saka. To believe. To believe. To believe more. Ramo. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord says, I am faithful. I am faithful. But I'm taking you in a different different way. A different way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for Pat, Lord. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, for what you're doing in his life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Pat, I see God stoking your fire. Stoking your fire, breathing on you. Yes. The Lord says, my son, you have believed me. You have trusted. You have stood in faith. Yeah. The Lord says to you, my son, I am, I am taking you into yes. a new season. A new season of new things. It's like you've been held up in certain <laughs> things to do. Just yeah. distracted. Just distracted. You've been, the devil has tried to distract yes. you with things to do with your health and all kinds of things. But the Lord says to you, I'm breathing fresh on you Ooh. and I'm taking you into a new season yes. of new yes. things. And the Lord says it's going to be yes. good for you. Yes. It's going to be exciting. It's going to propel you forward. The Lord says, I'm breathing afresh on you for the new, the new, new beginnings, new things, the Lord says, new beginnings, new things, the Lord says, I'm releasing those jewels to you. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Amen. Amen. All right, I am finished, I think. Yes. All right, hallelujah. Amen. Let us give God the glory Amen. because he loves you. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. Thank you for everything you've done. We seal it under the blood of Jesus. We seal it under the blood of Jesus. Angels of God, go and fetch what belongs to us. Hallelujah! It has to be to an email. I would prefer it to be to an email because this is going on YouTube. And I'm going to give you the YouTube link. I can email you the YouTube link so you can go. And right right listen to it. Right it will right be an audio, not a video. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. And if you look below the video, below the, the thing, Stand there's going to be a description box. Father it's going to say, release, show more. I release so you, your anointing, Father God. Yes. Lord. Upon Susie, yes, Father. Lord. Yes. Lord, I release your anointing upon her, Father. Lord, as she trusts you in faith, Lord, for these meetings, Father. Lord, as she trusts you in faith for these meetings, Father. Right now, release your anointing, Father. Your anointing to pray. Your anointing to press through. Your anointing to cover and protect what God has given her and her husband. Father, right now, release your fire, your anointing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the divine connections, Father, that she, that you are sending her way, Father, for this ministry. Thank you, Father, right now, Lord, that you bless her for opening up her home. Bless her, Father, for opening up her home, Lord. Bless her house, Lord. Bless her faith, Lord. Bless
bless her destiny, Father, in great and wonderful ways, Lord. We bless her in the name of Jesus. We bless her in the name of Jesus. That as she sleeps on her bed, you'll speak to her. You'll speak to her in the midnight hour. You'll speak to her in the dreams and visions, Lord. That you'll direct her, Father, in the decision she makes, Father. And Lord, that you'll warn her where she needs to be warned. In Jesus' name. Much discernment I release in Jesus' name. Right now, I release discernment, gift of discernment in Jesus' name. Gift of discernment in Jesus' name. That she would not be deceived in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this meeting tonight. And we thank you for loving on this God. We love you, Lord. We ask you to bless this food. We thank you for your provision. And we give you glory. And we, we give you all the glory tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We'll do something, please, if y'all don't mind. Let's pray over Pastor Deborah and Pastor William tonight. We're going to lay hands and pray on them. So if y'all want to come, especially the men. The men come and lay hands on the women. Lay hands on Deborah. That's the way to He's crying for somebody. Just a moment, he's crying for somebody. So, can I say something about this? Okay, everybody, I recorded the whole service. So if you want a recording to listen to later, all I need is your name and email. You can write it on my notepad over there, and I'll just send you the thing. And when you, when you get it, when you look below where, it's going to be an audio now, not a video. Look below the video, that, that area, and click on Show More. And it's going to expand that box, because every person's uh, prophecy I wrote down the time. So all you need to do is click on that time stamp and it'll go straight to your word. Praise God. So. Hi. What's up? Bless it. Awesome.